Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, San Diego. Go. Let me let me thank all of you for thank you for coming out tonight. And let me let me thank Rosario Dawson for that extraordinary introduction. It's a little bit hard to follow Rosario because she said everything I was going to say. The only thing she didn't say, I think, is not only do we have 9,000 people in this room, we got many thousands more in the overflow room. began this campaign about 10 months ago, we were 3% in the polls, about 70 points behind Secretary Clinton. As of today, last poll that I saw, we are five points behind and we're gaining. When we began this campaign, against the most powerful political organization in the country. We had no money and no volunteers. Now we have hundreds of thousands of volunteers all over this country. When we began this campaign, we were considered a fringe candidacy. Now who, who in America, the media said, could believe in a political revolution. Well, 10 months later, we have now won 10 primaries and caucuses. And unless I'm very mistaken, we're going to win a couple of more tonight. When we began this campaign, we talked about the need for millions of people to become involved in the political process. Tonight in Utah, tonight in Idaho, and tonight in Arizona, there are record-breaking turnouts in terms of voting. Now, this campaign, this campaign is doing as well as it is generating the kind of energy and excitement we're seeing here in San Diego and all over this country. Because we are doing something very unusual in modern American politics, we are telling the truth. Now, the truth is not always pleasant, not in our personal lives, not in our political lives, but we cannot go forward as a nation unless we are prepared to confront the real issues facing our country. And let me tell you briefly 
what some of those issues are. Number one, number one, in America today, we are living under a corrupt campaign finance system which is undermining American democracy. Democracy is not a complicated process. It really isn't. It means that you have one vote, you have one vote, you have one vote. You want to vote for me? You want to vote against me? That's fine. But what democracy, what democracy does not mean is that billionaires can spend unlimited sums of money to elect candidates who represent the wealthy and the powerful. That is not democracy. <laughs> democracy is not about cowardly Republican governors trying to suppress the vote. And all over this country, what we are seeing is Republican governors making it harder for poor people, for people of color, for young people, for old people to vote. And I say, I say to those cowardly governors, if you are not prepared to engage in a free and democratic election, get another job, get out of politics. Today, today, the United States has, sadly, one of the lowest voter turnouts of any major country on Earth. Our job is to ingre increase voter turnout, not lower voter turnout, to make it easier for people to participate, not harder. But as Rosario mentioned, this campaign is not just about a corrupt campaign finance system which is undermining democracy. It is about a rigged economy. It is about an economy in which the top one-tenth of one percent now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. It is about an economy where the 20 wealthiest people own more wealth than the bottom 150 million people. It is about an economy in which one family the Walton family owning Walmart. This one family owns more wealth than the bottom 40% of the American people. And what a rigged economy is about is the wealthiest family in this country paying their employees wages that are so low that many of those workers have to go on Medicaid and food stamps. And it is the middle class that pays more in taxes to pay for that Medicaid and food stamps. So I say to the Walton family, get off of welfare, pay your workers a living wage. That is, that is just one example of many of a rigged economy. Working people paying more in taxes to subsidize the wealthiest family in this country. That is crazy. Together, we're going to end that.
This campaign is about ending a situation in which millions of our people are working longer hours for lower wages. It's about ending a situation where people in America need to work two or three jobs just to bring in enough income and health care to take care of their families. It's about an economy where mom is working, dad is working, kids are working, marriages are stressed out, kids do not get the attention they need. This campaign is about creating an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. But it is not just a corrupt campaign finance system that we are going to change. It is not just a rigged economy that we are going to reform. It is also a broken criminal justice system. It is not acceptable to me that we have more people in jail than any other country on earth. Not acceptable that we are spending $80 billion a year, $80 billion, to lock up 2.2 million Americans, disproportionately African American, Latino, Native American. This campaign is about real criminal justice reform, real police department reform. This campaign is about saying we are tired of seeing unarmed people, often minorities, shot by police. Now, I have been a mayor, and I have worked with police departments all over my state and police departments all over the country. And the truth is, vast majority of police officers are honest and hardworking. But, but when a police officer, like any other public official, breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable. This campaign is about ending the militarization of local police departments. It is about making police departments reflect the diversity of the communities they serve. It is about rethinking the war on drugs. Today, marijuana is a Schedule I drug under the federal... A Schedule I drug under the Federal Controlled Substance Act, right alongside of heroin. In my view, that is nuts, and that's why we have introduced legislation to take marijuana out of the Federal Controlled Substance Act.